Now we need to start applying our knowledge of ombre blending into that front foreground layer. Remember that the ombre works better with harmonious colours, those that are closer together in the colour wheel, because they will blend through more gradually. We start off darker using directional shading along the lines, pressing on harder and gradually getting lighter as we come down. That's when we will bring in the lighter shade of the colour and start to overlap. Where we combine the different pressure and the overlapping of the different shades, it starts to give us a subtle blend, which is so important when we're trying to create a seamless ombre blend. We continue this technique and the gradation of colour across the whole contour band, going behind the different elements that we've drawn in there. This helps to unite the layer and gives us that feeling of continuity. For these sections, I'm using two different types of green, the dark green and the lighter green. And then finally, I will use my lighter colour, which will be the yellow, as the blender. We want the colour change to be gradual. We don't want great big steps or jumps in colour. To really get it like Hundervas's work, we need that blend to be quite seamless. It's really quite important that as you go through this, you pause and you look at where you may need to build up other colours, where you might need to change the direction of your marks or just make something a little bit bolder to create more of a contrast. As we said before, the lighter colour, in this case it's the yellow, we use as the blender. We're going over all of the different colours and trying to create a unity. It gets rid of the white and gives a, a vibrancy to that colour mix. To make sure that I'm not going over some of the elements that I've drawn in, I'm keeping my finger there as a buffer so that as I colour across, I stop myself going over the lines and into the shapes that I don't want to be that colour. I'm constantly looking at the way that I've blended the colours, whether I need lighter or darker colours, whether I need to make a smoother blend or transition, and I build it up as I go along. It depends on the colour palette that you're using as to which is going to be your blender colour. Yellow, orange and red, you would use the yellow. Green, blue and yellow, you would use the yellow. But for some of the purples, you may use a sort of a pink or a peach colour. Again, test it out in the back of your book to make sure that you're clear. Final edits are made by going in with any of the darker colours that you need to to even out and smooth those blends. To do this well, you will swap and change between different coloured crayons as you make those edits and build up the surface. The hills and waterways will be in cool colourways. I quite often build all of those up at the same sort of time so I can see the balance across the picture and across the composition before I start to work back into it with the more contrasting warm colours. In the same way as we did with the cool colours, start off on those outlines with the darker tones gradually getting lighter as you blend in. You can mix and match different types of colours to create those ombre effects. And what, you, what I would suggest you do is test that out in the back of your book. It's like a safe space for you to practice and make sure everything's going to work out fine. Think about your colour theory. If you want to make some of the, the colours darker or lighter, which colours would you add in? Which ones would you layer? We want to contrast the warmer ombre colours from the elements with the cooler background colours. That way it will create a contrast and those elements will stand out that little bit more. Refer to Hundervas's work, look at the colours that he combines and the way that he creates his ombre. Um, this can be an inspiration for you and the way that you decide to apply it to your particular foreground.
Remember the edges of the shapes along those lines, it's the darker colour, pressing on harder and gradually getting lighter. Remembering to blend in some of the lighter tones and finally using your blender colour on that top layer. You can continue to use this idea and this technique throughout all the different elements in your picture. Another way of building up your colouring can be to put a base colour of the lightest colour, such as the yellow, down first and blending in some of those darker shades around the edge to make certain things look 3D. Adding the colour is the bit that makes it really exciting. Good luck!